All right, if you're watching this at home, the announcement, how to register for our MindTap course, you just follow that link, and then at some point, you're going to have to enter that key. There's an entire document about how to do it if you want to pop that open and see it. All that stuff. Okay, so right now we're going to learn how to count in binary. I'm just going to do this in Notepad. So in binary, we have powers of 2 rather than powers of, you know, 10 or whatever. So we have 10 to the power of 0. And then next to it, we have 10 to the power of 1. And then in the next place, we have 10 to the power of 2. And in the next place, we have 10 to the power of 3. Now, nowadays, computers use 8 bits in a byte. What is a bit? It's a place that can hold a 0 or a 1. And so a byte is a collection of 8 of those zeros or 1s. I don't feel like writing 8 places, you know, right now. So we're just doing half a byte. So why don't we just write that down? A byte is 8 bits. A bit is a 0 or 1. It's a binary place. Okay, so these are the place values that we're going to play with. What is 10 to the power of 0? Excuse me, why don't I say 2 to the power of 0? What's 2 to the power of 0? 1. Any number to the power of 0, I know it looks like 0. Any number to the power of 0 is 1. So what's 2 to the power of 1? 2. two. What's 2 to the power of 4? Four. Four. Oh, 2 to the power of 4. I gave the answer there. What is 2 squared? It's 4. And 2 cubed is 8. You can kind of see the pattern. It doubles each time, right? So if I had, if I wanted to do all 8 bytes, 16, 32, 64, and 128. I don't feel like doing all 8 bytes. So we have our place there. So we're going to cruise on down the road. I'm going to change this to just our counting system like that so that I don't have to space things out. We drive a mile. That's what our odometer is. We drive another mile. Oh no, I have maxed out my counting system because the digits in binary are 0 and 1. So I've already maxed it out. There's no 2. So instead, that rolls over to a 0 and we increment the next one. So we go another mile. 11. We go another mile. What does it turn into? Y'all got to really make me walk through this? Just like 99 on your on your your real car. Once you drive 99, what does it turn into? It turns into 100. So what happens here? That's one. When we increment it, rolls back to a zero, right? And so we need to increment the next slot. Well, it's already maxed out too. I could keep going. It doesn't really take that long. Zero one zero one. Zero, one, one, zero. Zero, uh, one, one, one. I'm not sure I did that right. I think so. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's correct. How do I know it's correct? Because you can figure out the maximum value that a counting system can support. The maximum value of base 10 is 99, right? The maximum value of base 2, if, okay. The maximum value of base 10 with two digits. is 99, right? You only have two places on your odometer. It's 99. Your maximum value of base 2 with two digits with two places is 3. What do I mean by that? If we only had these last two places, then you could count 0, 1, 2, and 3. So the maximum value of 2 with three places. I'm going to change those word digits to places. It 
is 7. Right? We have three places. When do we max out our odometer if we only have three digits? At that value. If we were going to count that out, that'd be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Maybe we see a pattern here. Just trust me on this one. 2 with four places is 15. All righty. Think about it. 2 to the power of 2 is 4. Minus 1 is 3. 2 to the power of 3 is 8. Minus 1 is 7. 2 to the power of 4 is 16. Minus 1 is 15. 10 to the power of 2 is 100. Minus 1 is 99. So using that knowledge, we could figure out the maximum value of any base, any number of places. Say we had base 5 to 3 digits. I should not use base 5. I, I can't do that kind of math in my head. I might be able to do it. But anyways, 4 with th 3 places. That would be 4. And instead of using the caret at this, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll keep using the caret. We'll get to the other symbol later. 4 to the power of 3 minus 1 is 63, all right? I think 4 times 4 is 16, 4 times 16 is 64, minus 1 is equal to 63. So if you had an odometer that had three places in it and you were in a world that counted in base 4, the maximum value would be 63. That gets kind of important when we're talking about the numbering system we're going to get to next that has, is base 16. Anyways, if we kept driving, we would get to 1111. We could figure out what that max value is because, again, that is 8, the 4, the 2, and the 1 place. And so if we were going to do that multiplication just like we did that conversion, 1 times 8 is what? It's 8. 1 times 4 is what? 4. 1 times 2 is 2, and then 1 times 1 is 1. And if you add 8, 4, 2, and 1, you get 15. And if we were going to do it that other way, base 2 with 4 places is 2 to the power of 4. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. You can, you know, figure that out. It's 16 minus 1 is 15. I'm not going to ask you to count to figure out the maximum value of a certain number of digits to a certain number of power. But you could always figure it out for binary just by adding up those places, right? 8, 4, 2, 1. If you had 8 bits, you know, you'd go, you'd carry those out because the places are 1, 2, 4, 8, and then they keep doubling, right? 16, 32, 64, 128. And if you had 1s all the way across, you could add them up. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that's 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8, 16, 32, 64, and 128. And if you added all those together, that would be 255. Just take it on faith. So that in base 2, you know, would be that. That's the maximum value that you could hold in 8 bits. In other ter uh, terms, 8 bits can hold 256 different values including zero. All right, I'm going to ask you all to convert a few numbers in base 10. Uh, excuse me, convert base 2 to base 10. I'll do one, then I want you to do a couple. If I have 0, 1, 0, 1, I'm going to write my little cheat sheet up here, 8, 4, 2, 1. What is that equal to? How many 8s do we have? No 8s. How many fours do we have? We have one, so that's four plus how many threes do we have? Come on, guys. You can see it. None. How many ones do we have? Wait, what did I do there? Zero times three is not equal to three. What is it? It's zero. Sorry about that. And then one times one is one. So four plus one is equal to five. So I want y'all to do, I'm going to kind of just push that to the side over here like that. How about doing 0, 1, 1, 0 for me? 
and then do 1001 for me. All right, if I see somebody not writing, I'm going to assume that you're done, and I'm going to pick you. Just kidding. Um, who's got the first one? Go for it. Uh, six. Yeah, that's six. Why is that? Because it's four plus two. Right, that's it? There's no more? Four plus two is equal to six. How about the next one? Somebody on this side. Yeah, it's 9. Why is that? Because it's what? Tell me the plus is involved. 8 plus 1 is equal to 9. All right, so we're good there. Going to talk about hexadecimal now. You know, if binary, which is base 2, has two digits, 0 and 1, if... I don't even know a term for base 4, so I'm going to skip that one. Decimal is base 10. So it has 10 digits. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's 10 digits, right? You don't start counting at 1 in math. You start counting at 0. Hexadecimal, which is base 16, Starts off the same, right? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I've done 10, but I wanted to keep counting up to 16. Yes, sir? Um, why, is it, why is it 4 plus 2 and not 9? Did I goof it? Yeah. Uh, we have 1 times 4. Then eight what, what is that 3 up there? Is that right? Mm -hmm. I botched that. I fat fingered it, right? Does that make more sense, y'all? I am very sorry about that. Powers of 2, you just keep multiplying two by 2 every time. 1 times 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, carried out like that. Okay, so we were counting in hexadecimal. We got to 9, but we need to get up to 16. What are we going to do? Can we use 10? No, because that's 2. <coughs> We have to make up symbols for the rest of them out to 16. The English-speaking people in the world used A, B, C, D, E, and F as their numbers, as their digits. Did the Russians use A, B, C, D, E, and F? No, they use their own letters, right? Um, eventually, they may have adopted, you know, hexadecimal once, you know, they started, you know, making their co computers compatible with uh, the rest of the world. But anyways... So, that's hexadecimal. If you were going to count in hexadecimal, you're driving your car down the street, and I'm only going to do two digits. 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2. Okay, so we're counting in base 16, which I'm going to shorten to the word hex. If you ever hear the word hex, that means hexadecimal. You know, a hex, a hexagon's got six sides. I wonder why that, that has to be some, like, Greek prefix or something. <laughs> And which is base 16. We're going to drive our car. We're going down the road. Do you have to write all these in your notebook? No. You could kind of skip ahead. But am I going to roll over yet? No. Because I have more digits. I have not maxed it out yet. I've not maxed out my counting system. So the next one is 0A. 0B. 0C. 0D, 0E, 0F. Now have I maxed it out? Indeed I have, right? I'm at my last digit. I can't get all of that in uh, on one screen because I made my font too big. Anyways, you know that F is the largest, but just remember that F is, is the last place because your extra digits are A through F. Why is that? So that you have 16 different digits total. And again, the symbols are arbitrary. You could have used emoji. You could have used you know, circles and squares and triangles, whatever. 
So what happens when you max out a digit? What does it turn into when you increment it? What does F turn into when you add one to it? Just, yeah, it turns into zero and we add one to the next column. And then we keep going. Yeah. We don't stop there because we can keep going. 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D, 1E, 1F. Now we have maxed out that digit again. So the F becomes a zero, right? You go from the last digit back to the first one, and then you add one to the next column. So 1F becomes 2, 0. Now is 2, 0 in hex equal to 20 in our base 10? Not at all. Let's figure out how we're going to convert that. How do we convert 20 in base 16 to base 10? You could say convert 20 in hex to decimal. They mean the same thing. All right, so for decimal, we had powers of 10. For binary, we had powers of 2. So guess what our hexadecimal number is? It's powers of 16. So we're going to have 16 to the power of 3, 16 to the power of 2, 16 to the power of 1, and 16 to the power of 0. Now, I don't feel like whipping out a calculator and figuring out what 16 to the power of 3 is, so I'm going to delete that one. But any number to the power of 0 is what? 1. Any number to the power of 1 is itself. Any number squared is 16 times 16, which I happen to have memorized, is 256. And by the way, if I ask you on an exam or something like that, you know, nobody... Um, Half of y'all are not carrying calculators with you. I don't care if you launch your computer's calculator or whip out your phone. You don't have to do all this by hand. But so we have three places. I want to convert 20 in hexadecimal to decimal. So that is 0 to 0. Well, what is that? 0 times 256 is 0. <laughs> Plus 2 times 16 is what? 32 plus 0 times 1 is 0. So that's equal to 32 in base 10. So in other words, 20 in base 16 is equal to 32 in base 10. Let's do another one, just because this is the funnest thing that we've done all day. I'm going to cheat again and carry that 256, 16, and 1 down here just so that you know, it's easy to follow. We're going to convert 37 hexadecimal. No. We're going to convert 30F hexadecimal. Just to be weird. Nah, A. Make up your mind, Mr. Prof. We're going to convert 33A in base 16 to base 10. All righty. Again, we only have two digits. So the first one is 0. And then we have a 3. And then we have an A. But what are we going to do with that A? We just have to remember our little counting system from way up here. Where'd my digits go? If that's a 9, then an A is a 10. A B is 11. A C is a 12. A D is a 13. An E is a 14. And an F is a 15. So we could make a little cheat sheet that made that easier to figure out. And by the way, if I ask this stuff for you on a quiz or an exam, I will give you these cheat sheets so that you don't have to write them out yourself. But I want to go ahead and do that. If we have a hex and then we have a decimal column, and then you start counting in hex, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Those numbers are all the same, right? So that's... I should have tabbed. Tabbing is easier. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. But now we're at hex. Let's tab that over. 
So we have A, B, C, D, E, and F. So that means that an A is a what? We just keep counting, so it's a, it's a 10. And a B is a, yeah, we, we get the pattern. So back to where we were, I want to convert this 0, 3A. We're going to do some multiplication. How many 256s do we have? None. How many 16s do we have? 3. 3 times 16 is 48. So we have 48 plus 1 times A. Well, what's 1 times A? Well, if an, what is an A? An A is a 10, right? So what's 1 times 10? 10. 10, right. And 48 plus 10 is 58. I'm going to push this one down so that I can keep my little cheat sheet on the screen. We're going to do one more. We're going to do 1 A 3 in hex. Convert it to decimal. All righty, 256, 16, 1. Because that's 16 to the power of 0, 16 to the power of 1, 16 to the power of 2. All right, so 1, A, 3. Let's add them up. What's 1 times 256? 256, that's the easiest one, right? What's 16 times A? If an A is a 10, that's 160. 10 times 16 is 160. And then what's the last one? 3. Okay. Is my brain good enough to add 256, 160, and 3? Somebody else do that. What is that? Four hundred eighteen. 19? Okay, cool. Thanks. That's how you do it. So, I'm going to give you one. Convert 1, 2, 3 in base 16 to base 10. And then convert 0 to a, um, F in base 16 to base 10. Just set it up like you did this. I'm going to pull the cheat sheet back up on the screen to make it easier. And so if we spend 45 minutes doing all of this in a class, it's a kind of likely that it's going to come back. I also had to break myself of saying, I know, right? Isn't that kind of dumb? Because if you already know it, you don't need to add the right. So instead, you just, you know, whatever. Sayings are funny. And I guess in a minute I'll show you how to cheat. But on a quiz, you better not cheat because I'm going to ask you to show me those numbers. You know, the adding.
that was involved and just not the final answer. Because on a quiz, if I ask you what ABC is in, dec in hex, convert it to decimal, and you go, you rattle off that it's equal to 2,334, whatever it is, you know. Um, you're not going to get credit for it. You're going to have to show, you know, the multiplication steps, just like you're doing in your head right now. All righty. So, somebody tell me this one. What are the numbers we're adding up? I don't want to make our chart, so you just tell me. What's the the uh, first one, the 256 column. Six. One times 256 is, 256 is 256 plus what's the next column? 32. Plus 32. And the last one is, why don't I get, actually get that number? I can't do that in my head. What is that? 291. 291. Cool. No problem. All righty. How about the next one? Are there any 256s? No. So what's the next one? 32. 32. Plus, yeah. And F is a 15. So 32 plus 15. That one I can do in my head. That's 47. All right. You know how to count in hexadecimal. Well, why would I want to do that? Um, if you keep going down, in, uh, in computers and stuff like that. You have to have these concepts down. But like I said, comp um, modern computers are broken down into bytes. They didn't have to be that way, but they are. And a byte is eight bits. Let, let's write that stuff down. Byte is eight bits, and a bit is a zero or a one. It's a binary place. Now, if we were going to count it out from place, from using eight bits, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way to one, 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 that's obviously equal to zero, and uh, that's 255. Why? Because eight. No, we're talking a binary, so it's two to the. Let's write all that out again. Two binary places. No, eight binary places. Write it out one more time. Binary with eight places. How many digits can you, or what's the maximum value? Binary is two to the power of eight. You could whip out your calculator to figure that out. That's 256 minus 1 means 8 bits can hold the values 0 to 255, which is a total range of 256. So where's one place you see that? Well, if you type text into a computer in something like Notepad, the values get stored as bytes. If I type in hello, each one of these letters corresponds to a certain byte value. Now that E is not a hexadecimal E because each one of these is actually a byte. It's 8-bit values now. I'm going to pop this up and we're going to hit this idea again later. I'm not going to talk about it any, um, after this brief mention. But what you do is you use something, what's known as an ASCII chart. Let me just pick one and hope it's a good one. Well, that one's kind of blurry. I'm not digging that one. Hey, that might be a cool website. I need to take a note of it again. Anyways, so you look up the character and you can figure out its hexadecimal or its decimal value. And H in hex is a 49. No, a 48. And E is a 45. And L is a 4C. Another L is a 4C. And a O is a 4F. 
And if you don't believe me, let's prove that. I'm going to move that word hello up to the top of my notes. Go ahead and open Notepad. Just go here to the Start menu. Type Notepad. Type in hello. And hit Enter. Now save it to your desktop, somewhere easy to find. Obviously, this, this file is not important after today, so who cares where you save it. I'm going to call it hello.txt to make it easy to find. These are what are known as ASCII characters. ASCII stands for American something for information interchange, something like that. I don't remember. Those are an 8-bit character set where each letter that you can type on a keyboard corresponds to an 8-bit value. A hexadecimal value. So, you know, asterisks and even the weird things. Don't know if y'all know this, but if you hold the Alt key down and type in a number on the numeric keypad, you get weird characters. Maybe you've done that before. You know, like you're going to memorize all those. But, anyways, those are all part of the extended ASCII character set. So, I've got hello. I hit enter on it. I'm going to save it. And now I want to open up a site that will show me the hexadecimal version of that text. And we're going to use something known as a hex editor. So go to hexed.it. They, they just chose a clever name for it. Inside your browser. Chrome or Firefox or Internet Explorer. I like Chrome, so I'm going to use that. Hexed. Dot IT. And it comes up with this thing. Do open file. And pick your hello.txt file wherever you saved it. And if you didn't manage to do this, just watch me on the screen. It's cool. There's my hello.txt file. If you haven't turned extensions on, it'll just say hello. All right. Now, if I turn that in over here, I'm going to see that these numbers are the same ones that I predicted they were from the ASCII chart. An H is a 4.8 in hex. An E is a 4.5. I know these digits are real small. That's why I wanted you to, I mean, the screen is real small. That's why I wanted you to do it yourself. An L is a 4C. Another L is a 4C. An O is a 4F. And then, oh, there's some extra stuff here. There's a 0D and there's a 0A. We can look back up on those ASCII chart what those special characters are. Those are known as control characters. If I go and look on the ASCII chart, which I seem to have lost, I'm going to view the image again. A 0A, 0D is a carriage feed, like your printer or your typewriter going up. And then a 0A is a line feed. I have that backwards. A line feed is when it goes down a line, like hitting enter on a typewriter, and a carriage feed is when it goes back to the beginning. So if you typed in multiple lines of text, you'd see the text followed by a 0D and a 0A. You'd see another one with a 0D and a 0A. You'd see another line of text with a 0D and 0A. Now Macs and Unix computers do something different they don't have the zero A's or they don't have the zero D's I forget which so if you create a file on one of those computers a text file on one of those computers and you open up with hex edit you might not see both the zero D and the zero A you just see one of them okay so you've been introduced to the idea of the hex editor we'll hit that again later on you can get software that'll do this. You can download it on your home machine. You don't have to go to a website in order to do this, but it's kind of nice to be able to do that. I had one more comment to make about that, but I'll probably make it, I'll, I'll try to remember to make it again as we talk more about ASCII at a later lecture. IBM had their own counting system where the letters were not contiguously numbered, which is insane. You know, A, B, and C, and D, and then maybe there'd be a break. Some, 
and then D, E, and F, and G, but, you know, that was IBM. But a long time ago, they adopted ASCII, just like the rest of, you know, of the computers on the planet. All righty. So we're going to talk now about how a computer works. But are we going to talk real complicated about processors and buses and stuff like that? No, I'm just going to draw pretty pictures on the board of a little dude in a box. So, obviously this is not a real technical explanation. So what is a computer? We have a dude in a box. And he's got an infinitely long piece of paper. Well, not infinitely long. But you know, you've heard the term megabytes and gigabytes and stuff like that. A megabyte is a million bytes, more or less. A gigabyte is a billion bytes. So, you know, he's got his, uh, you know, his phone, which has got, you know, uh, you know, 64 megabytes in it. Yeah. So this piece of paper is really divided up into 64 million places to write. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever. Numbered consecutively. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way down to 64 million. So he's got that information. We give him instructions. Read place number 64. Store in, I'm going to call this register 1. So not only does he have the ability to read and write with his cool little pencil there, his crayon, what it looks like to this memory, but he's also got some pieces of paper he can write on in his box, which are known as registers. So we give him a series of instructions. Read place number 64 and store that value in register one. I'm gonna just make this six, right, because, no. okay. So we found a 100 here in place six. So in register one, he writes 100. Then his next instruction, read place number four, store in register two. So say we had the number 30 stored in that byte. So he <laughs> reads the four, eyeballs it, and then he takes his pencil and he writes 64, no, what did I say it was, 30 in register 2. And then we give him another instruction, add register 1 and register 2. So he adds those two together. Maybe he has another piece of paper to do that. You know. Maybe he needs to store it temporarily and he puts it down here somewhere. But anyways, he adds 100, he adds, you know, 30. So add, he gets 130. Add register 1 and 2 and store in register 3. So that was his instructions. 1, 2, 3. So he added those two values, 130. They're now stored in another register. We're going to give him one more instruction, which is write register 3 to placeholder 7. So he looks at register 3, he writes a 130 there. And he's done. All right, we gave him four instructions. These instructions are technically known as opcodes. 
And earlier, you know, early chips invented in the 70s may have had, you know, 16 op codes or 32 op codes or 64 op codes. You know, very complex pinium chips and, you know, whatever they're called now, ARM 64 chips and whatever have, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of op codes in order to optimize the instructions they can do. Each op code means a different thing. So the read op code might be, let's just call it op code. Uh, I'm going to use letters to, uh, you know, to not store these letters in, in the computer, but A. That could be that guy's op code. And then a write op code could be a B. And then the add command could be op code C. So when we gave him those instructions, and I'm not going to ask this on an exam, no, but I just want you to kind of think the way a computer thinks, at least for, you know, a day. That read six, store in register one, might be some instructions. A is the read six, one, like that. Read memory six, store in register one. And then that next one, read four, would be command A, and store in register two. And that add would be C, and we want to add registers one and two, and store in three. These are probably more complex op codes and are really loud. And then that last one, that write back out to memory. I forgot the add one. Add would have been D, right? I don't have a, an add command. So D, and then write back out. So write what is in register three and store it in memory address seven. Fundamentally, that is what the processor is doing underneath. So what is happening is that this stuff is actually also stored in the memory, but in a particular place in the memory. And something, the processor itself, is retrieving these instructions getting these instructions, so maybe somewhere in a special place in memory, he had an A, he had an A, he had a B, a W, whatever. He's reading these instructions and he's following them. You know, and it could take like one clock cycle. If a computer is running at one gigahertz, and you've heard that term, that means a billion instructions per second, or a billion cycles per second. So he can do four instructions in an incredibly fast amount of time. So anyways, that's what's happening. He's being given a series of instructions, and he's writing in memory, and he's storing stuff, you know, in registers. That's an extraordinary simplified way. That's probably the way computers worked in the 1970s. Nowadays, they're incredibly optimized, where they do conditional, where they try to figure out multiple things, multiple pathways of execution, so that maybe they could do, they already have the answer to this before they even did that. And maybe you all have heard of those recent chip problems where both the Intel chips and the ARM chips that are used in the phones all have some security flaw, you know, and so they had to put out, you know, an update to software to try to fix that, but it slows your computer or your phone down. That's a huge, huge flaw, you know, in every chip that's been made in the past 10 years. I forget what that's called. Phantom bug, and then there's another similar one. So that's all that's happening. He's being fed a series of instructions. We're about out of time. We are about out of time. This doesn't explain how he's writing to a disk drive, you know, or sending stuff to a monitor or reading from a keyboard. Nowadays, everything is a computer. The uh, keyboard is an itty bitty little computer of its own. The disk drive is a computer. So he's talking to another little guy who controls the disk drive. <coughs> stuff like that. All right, let's take a roll real quick and then be done with it.